Michael Joyce is my name. I'm a PhD student at the University of Bath researching bioplastics. Well, day to day I'm in the lab, I'm making these new types of plastics which we make from renewable resources rather than crude oil and it involves lots of meetings, lots of discussions with industrial partners, presentations, phone calls, so lots of speaking opportunities and it's basically research focused and three and a half years focused on a particular topic to produce thesis at the end to then defend in a, an oral viva, so an oral kind of presentation where you have to justify your work. So that's kind of the big speaking challenge at the end of it. I think there's quite a creative side to it, which I never thought there would be, which kind of quite appeals to me in the sense that it's your PhD, it's your project, so you're working on the research and you have to feed back to supervisors and industrial partners who are focused on the real world uh, application. So I really like the fact that my work could have an impact in a few years time in the real world. I find that application driven research really m motivating. When I was choosing my university choices I'd, I'd not done really any speech therapy apart from NHS speech therapy which I wasn't committed enough at the time, I wasn't interested enough in it at the time, which, which was a shame. Um, but yeah, I think it did affect my choices. I wanted to do something more, I suppose, academically focused. I always really enjoyed drama and, um, you know, I was quite interested in politics and debate and stuff, but obviously I couldn't see myself going down those sorts of routes but I could see myself going down uh, more of a scientific route, which I really loved as well. You know, I was quite fortunate to have those options. But, yeah, I remember coming here for the open day in Bath with my dad, and there was kind of an informal sit-down in the room, and you're talking to members of staff, and I just remember just this feeling of, like, what in the world to swallow me up, like, these people I want to impress because I want to go to university, I can't say what I want to say, I'm blocking a lot and I feel terrible about it. And actually, obviously they didn't care, they didn't mind how I spoke, it was all down to me. Um, so I definitely feel like those situations made me kind of weary of putting myself forward into, into group situations or interview-like situations because it's that kind of conflict of I want to impress but I stutter and I think I can't impress when I stutter. Which if you say out loud, just sounds ridiculous. Like, you know, you care so much more about what people think of your stutter than anyone else does in reality. And that's been proven to me time and time again. But I got through it and I got to university. So that is proof that it doesn't actually matter how you talk to someone. They're kind of more interested in what you have to say. I'd give the advice that actually people don't care about your stutter as much as you do and you really, really shouldn't let it hold you back. If you're at the stage that you want to go on a course or do speech therapy or do something about your stutter to maybe help you deal with those situations, I would say do it if you feel ready. But there's nothing that's going to, the only person stopping you is yourself. I think if you stutter, it's really important in an interview to tell someone you stutter. Because if you stop hiding it, it will stop hurting you. That's a quote I heard somewhere, but I, I really think it's an important one. And people are going to know you stutter, or you speak in a different way, just basically. And it's important that you almost take control of that and say, look, uh, I've got a stutter, or we're working on my speech just bear with me. And what I've found by doing that over and over again is in fact by disclosing your stutter, you're taking control, everyone knows, you know everyone knows, and it's a far more, a more, a far more relaxing experience. You shouldn't let your stutter dictate your life choices. If anything now I choose things that challenge myself with my speech because I mean, I never got to be able to do that before, and actually now I think it's, it feels great. I love being someone who stutters, who can 
give presentations better than a lot of people in the room because I've focused on it so much or you know pride myself on trying to pronounce every word how it should be said because I want to make sure I'm coming across as a, an eloquent speaker you know these sorts of things that fluent speakers fluent in inverted commas haven't ever had to think about the fact that you are so concerned about your speech is actually going to be a good thing for you in the future and you know telling my younger self that I don't think I'd have believed it at the time but it's amazing what you know a few years can do in a few years can, can change and actually you'll start to feel empowered by your stutter and almost, certainly I do, I feel proud to stutter which is a bizarre concept where it would have appeared so but actually now the opportunities, the people you meet, the things you get to do like making videos to help other people who stutter and show that actually there are routes to whatever you want to do in life is really really cool and I wouldn't be doing this unless I had a stutter. Comparing to what everyone else was doing, yeah, I felt, I definitely felt held back in social situations and interviews and things. Yeah, they were quite tough. But I, I'd always disclosed that I had a stutter so that people knew. And obviously, I never, I never entered a situation where by me telling someone I stuttered that it affected me negatively, you know. So my university interviews went well interviews for just jobs, so I worked in a pasty factory for a while, which is funny because I'm from Cornwall, so that's all we do down there, and worked in a restaurant for a while, and they both had interviews where I stuttered so much, but still got the role, the part-time work, and it was, was all okay, but, you know, obviously, when you're 16, 17, and there's phone calls which you need to be making to the bank or something, or even you know, when I was 18, 19, you kind, of, you kind of don't want your parents to have to do that for you. So that, that definitely held me back, feeling like, you know, at an age where you're kind of finding that independence, you'll start to kind of taking that away from you. But I think I've, I've reclaimed that now. <laughs>